Three, two, one. All right, we're now with Pleasant Game, and she has done it all. We're talking the 80s and all that she survived. And she's an author, and you do so much now. You've got the whole counterculture world that you've created here. You've done all the music. You've, you know, written a number of books now. Talk about Rock and Roll Witch, your latest book. Rock and Roll Witch is, um, the, the subtitle to it is, um, is a memoir of sex, magic, drugs, and rock and roll. Because <laughs> it's basically, um, it's my ninth book, and it's basically like my other books, which are all memoir, all true and unembellished. And this is wild, wild, paranormal, and witchy, and ghosty, and bizarre stories. But it's uh, almost all of them are with like people like the Go Go's or Alex Chilton or the blasters, or um, the germs, the cramps. Kid Congo is all over the book. Actually, when his book's coming out in October and it's called Some New Kind of Kick and we were talking on the phone um, when we were both working, you know, we had both just passed in the manuscripts for our books and he said, you are all over my book. And I said, dude, you're, you're in practically every story of my book. <laughs> So it's all just crazy stories, you know, that it's it's like it's like ghost stories, but it's punk rock and rock and roll ghost stories. And that really happened with the real people. And, you know, a lot of the people that were in the book gave me great quotes for it, you know, and it's getting it's getting really, really good response. And um, so if anyone you can get it on Amazon or um from Punk Hostage, punkhostagepress.com, that's my press. Or if you go to my website, pleasantgaming.com, I will send you, um, you know, I'll, you can buy it from there and I'll autograph it to you and I'll kiss it and stuff. You can have my DNA. <laughs> I know people were lined up at the bookstore for that, for that lipstick and uh, autograph. We love it. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's real. And uh, Kid Congo, I mean, the, the cramps, all these bands were just so infamous for their decadence and their outrageous, you know, um, behavior. And to them, it just seemed normal. They had come up in so many different kinds of ways. And, you know, I was telling Jerry Lee Lewis and sister today, it's like, it's so amazing that punk rock embraced that early roots rock and roll, that rockabilly, it had the same, it psychobilly and all that. It was the exact same energy. That's why it's like, it's like you said before, it's like what music makes you feel, what it inspires in you. It was the same, all that early rockabilly stuff from the fifties is so fucking wild. It's hard to, I mean, of course there was some that weren't that well, but you could still listen to, you know, like Johnny Carroll doing rock and roll Ruby, like screaming through it and stuff, or like, you know, when you listen to anything of Eddie Cochran, what, what, how old was he yeah. when he died? Was he like 18? Was he 17? I mean, it's insane. It's, it's crazy. It's a, yeah, but uh, Vincent, all that. I mean, yeah, the, that, she, that, she that, reminded that, me of Jerry Lee Lewis doing Breathless that X did. And yeah. everybody's covered, you know, Great Balls of Fire and a whole lot of shaking going on. And it's just timeless. That music. I'll, tell you, what, I'll tell you a really funny story. When, when Levi and I were first dating, hang on. So hold on, I'm getting my car keys, sorry. Okay. Hi. I'm doing, I'm doing a fine. Well, yeah, that that's crazy. The the timeless music, the you look back at the 80s and it seems like in one way a lifetime ago, and another way, it just seems like everything has been a consistent, you know, run from that. And and so many of those characters from the Hollywood 80s have become movie stars. They become rock and roll hall of famers. They became, yeah. you know, multi-platinum icons around the world. But um, it's it's that free spirit, you know, that we, we love so much that permeates your books and everything you do and all the groups that you've been in. I mean, it's crazy. Screaming Sirens and Ringling Sisters. I mean, how creative were you just come up with these concepts and to start creating music and there were no rules and that was so great about it and we really hope that the younger generations embrace that they don't get caught up with all this technology and shortcuts and and, and really still want to be creative and pay their dues yeah I, I mean I still actually live like that now too you know I mean the the, the stuff that I 
experienced and the, uh, and learned from in the early days was you can do whatever the fuck you want if you put your mind to it, you know? And I tell that to people all the time and they look at me like I'm insane, but um, like I'll tell your listeners in case any of them are in LA, like I had a dream a few years ago in 2017 that I had an, an, yeah, an a la cult witchy burlesque show. And so I was like, I gotta do this. No one's doing it. And this was before everyone was a witch on TikTok or, <laughs> but um, I just thought this would be so cool. Who wouldn't wanna go to a, a witch burlesque show, you know? And so I named it Bell Book and Candle after the Kim Novak movie, which, you know, I discovered through punk rock because that was one of the movies that I used to watch when, when you know, it would, it would always come on TV. It was in regular rotation, you know, when everyone was coming home from clubs. But that's how most of us in punk rock got a really good like, film education too. But so I just, I just started the club, you know, and it, it went like the first one was two weeks out from when I decided to do it. And now we just had our fifth anniversary and it, you know, the show always sells out. I mean, it's always, it's always amazing. So that yeah. right there. Well, just congratulations. Came that came only from punk rock, you know? I mean, like I started my own magazine because I thought I could, you know, the fanzine and then I wrote for real magazines. I, I always tell people, I'm gonna, <laughs> this is gonna sound like, you know, I should be, be an inspirational speaker, but um, for people today, you've got so many more resources than we did back then, you know? Really, you could do whatever you want almost. Like, I mean, you know, maybe not like, you know, armed robbery and like, you know, yeah, as long as it's legal, you can pretty much create and find a niche. That's what I used to say about David Lee Roth, by the way, you know, with Van Halen, David thought really big. He dreamed like really big. Yeah. But like you say, he was smart. He found a way to pull it off. There's a lot of people that dream and never follow through. They don't know how to get started. Or and some they, of it is just and then, and then they complain like somebody took their idea. No, I think some a lot of, of people have that fear. idea. They just made it happen. Yeah. So that, like, like fear is the thing that that I think holds everybody, not everybody, but the people that don't do their dreams, fear is what holds them back, you know? And um, that that's like the biggest thing that I that I learned like from the punk yeah, you can't there. You can't be afraid to fail. It just means that you, you pick yourself up, dust yourself off and, and try it again. You learn something from that. You yeah. can't necessarily succeed the first time out. That's how everyone everyone started. No one was like, no one had been in bands before, maybe a couple of people, but nobody ever. It was just like, let's just do this and see what happens, you know? And that's- Yeah, I remember Jane Wheatland saying that. Like, we didn't know how to play. We just started making noise, you know? And- Totally. And learned along the way. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of people, like the thing that was um, really fun when I saw the, that, you know, I was in that, that Go-Go's documentary, but I didn't see the whole movie until it came out. And I was just laughing so hard because they were, it was it was like Jane and Charlotte and Kathy all just lied and said they knew how to play to so the other people. And, to, and then until it became apparent that nobody did, but it was just like, yeah, sure I can play. And it was like, okay, better learn how to play. <laughs> that's, that's what everything was like then. You just gotta, I mean, I tell this to people in, in um, when I'm teaching dance, you know, but, I, like I'll, I'll start teaching complicated things, you know, after a few lessons and some teachers are like, you can't teach that. That's way too advanced for them. And I was like, well, it looks like they're getting that step to me. And they're like, but that's too advanced. And then I just think like, what, does, if, if babies are supposed to crawl when they're eight months old, but a baby starts crawling at six and a half or seven months, the baby is not thinking, oh, I better wait till I'm eight months old. They just start doing it, you know? <laughs> yeah, and speaking of the Go-Go's, like I said, as part of the team that signed and put them out, and of course they had gotten turned down by every label. The, the label guys were like, nah, this will never sell. Other oh, girls can't play. And then when they hit, our lips are sealed and MTV and Beauty and the Beat, everybody's running around looking for a, a girls group. They, they, the same people that said girls group wouldn't sell they're all trying to jump on the bandwagon. No, I mean, not really though, because like a lot of people that like um, that my band or, or other bands went to, um, you know, record companies would be like, oh, oh, there's already the Go-Go's. And it's like, well, there was already the Beatles, but then, and there was already the Rolling Stones, but what about the other bands that came after that? You know what I mean? Like, 
some people in those days still looked at it as a novelty, you know, and nowadays it's not, which is amazing. I mean, it hasn't been for a long time, but in those days, some, some record company idiots actually had the idea that there only was ever going to be one all girl band and it was a fluke. You know? well, that's the thing about Van Halen. You would have thought they would have signed like a hundred Van Halens at LA after that. And they didn't until the eighties, you know, they, they yeah. came out in 77, 78. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, wait a minute. You, you thought Van Halen was the only one coming from California. That totally. Could make- yeah. They thought it was a fluke. I mean, that's, that's how, that's how um, stupid and disconnected a lot of the record companies were back there. Okay. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this too. This is funny because you worked for IRS, right? So I was working constantly for IRS, writing bios and press releases, you know, on the side, I was doing it freelance and that was, and it was good money. So that when, uh, and for a and you know, which was IRS was, you know, affiliated with. Um, so when my band, the Ringling Sisters got signed um, with Lou Adler from a and you know, got signed through to a and through Lou Adler, then um, I wrote the press. I wrote the press release for my band, right? And <laughs> the corporate people came to me, and they're like, "You can't write this press release." And, and I was like, "I just wrote it." And, and is it good? And they're like, "Well, it's written really well, but you can't write it." And I was like, "What? What are you talking about?" And they're like, "The artist can't write your own press release." And I was like, "I've written all the fucking press releases for you guys for months. What makes you think that the, the artist?" doesn't have a handle on what to write on a press release are you crazy you know what i mean yeah so, yeah I, like the audience knows who's in the band or who wrote it or whatever yeah come on it's so dumb i mean that was that was that was an example of record company cluelessness right there like yeah, the artist well, can't write the press release wow well, what a pleasure. I, I, like I say, we could talk for days on these memories, these stories. So great to reminisce about the scene in the eighties and late seventies. It was just so, so vibrant. And, you know, we carry that spirit into today and tomorrow, but it's, um, it's great to look back, you know, and, and celebrate the greatness of all the creative people and, uh, the, the, the people that took a chance. Yeah. You know? It's a, it took it's a, a risk, you know, and, and the and, people that are still around too, you yeah, know, and that so, are still so, doing so great things. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we look back and, 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 and celebrate the times and, you know, we've lost some people along the way, but boy, um, what, what great memories. And uh, we want to encourage everybody to go out and get Pleasant's book, Rock and Roll Witch, get it on Amazon, all, all of that, you know, Punk Hostage Press and all that hats off to Iris and everybody who helps you do that. And um, wow, Bell Book and Candle. I love it. It's um, it's incredible stuff that you come up with. I'm always amazed. I've always been uh, following what you do and remembering those early days. And it's like, there's no rules. Go, go, Pleasant, go. So <laughs> what, what, what a great time. I, I look forward to hopefully another conversation soon. And uh, please, best of luck with this book, your club, your your uh, all your activities. Go to her website. You'll be blown away with uh, uh, how much stuff. My, my Instagram's a scary mishmash of craziness. You guys will love it if you're not on it. It's Princess of Hollywood, all one word. And make sure you're on the right website because I've got like 23 imposters on Instagram right now. Um, but you'll, you'll, you could, you could tell by my amount of followers. Is, you know? is there a link from your website? Can they get your IG from your <clears throat> website? No, um, but I could, um, I could send it to you. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll, there'll be a link down below. Princess of Hollywood, you know, check it her out. And uh, please, you, you'll be impressed. Pleasant. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. And everyone listening, have a great day. And thank you guys. Rock and roll forever. Mwah.